What is good? Oh, nice, nice fresh crack. We got a uh, a nice fresh tripod, remote, little remote tripod. We got uh, Matt. How you doing, bud? It's been a, been a minute. Sorry for the power issue last week. You can blame goddamn Berkeley Electric Cooperative. Yeah, the well, bastards. Those sons bastards. of bitches. Big D, how's it going? It's good, brother. It's good. Today, what we are going to do is talk about some some high end kind of sells. Maybe not so high end, but we're always talking, you know, buying, selling, holding. Today, we're just going to do kind of straight sells. And I think uh, for me, it's a little bit not necessarily about like because I want to sell these guys because I think they stink and I hate them. Um, it's mostly because I want to. I'm going to pivot off of these guys and and try to you know move in a neutral tier or maybe even down and gain something is going to be kind of the way that I'm viewing looking at a lot of these kind of trades. Um, so I'll lead this thing off and the first guy off the rip is is going to be CMC for me. That's got to hurt as a 49ers fan. And it's it's no hate on CMC by any means. I still I still think CMC is going to be really really you know pretty strong most of the season uh he turns 27 in june uh so not terribly old and you know had been ridden hard and put away wet there for a for a while in in carolina but you know the niners could be you know shifting that a little bit more towards being a little bit more pass volume sharing uh the load with with Eli a little bit, which is part of the the pause when, when you know there's been plenty of people kind of bringing it up throughout the off season here. And as a Niners fan, I already kind of knew what it was, but to see it in black and white, you know, kind of with Eli, he's he was uh, averaging 16.7 uh, points per game, and then 24.9 without Eli. Um, and you know, the rush share was at 34 percent with Eli and 54% without Eli. So, you know, that's 15.4 carries a game for 75 rush yards uh, without Eli and 10.5 carries a game with 38 rushing yards with Eli. Now, Eli Mitchell has been banged up, but went went out there very productive and, and it would seem that they're going to split some load. McCaffrey was at a uh, 22% target share, went out there. So we know that the passing game work is going to be pretty elite. It wasn't something that they used Eli Mitchell in a whole lot. And then as soon as Christian McCaffrey got there, all of a sudden the Niners throw to the running back. You know, imagine that. It's, you know, they're doing a good job. Now, what we can note with some of that is, you know, he just got there. CMC had just got there with, with, with some of these stats. But I do think they are going to try to keep CMC as healthy as possible if Eli's able to go and, and be healthy. I think they will split work, and, and they do kind of have a little bit of different games to them, and they, they can be used a little differently um, and, and help, like I said, keep each other healthy. But, you know, kind of what, where I'm going with this is and my, my – uh, my pivot here would kind of be like you could go down to like an Eckler who like in our drafts right now that we're doing is almost consistently uh, a round, round and a half later than CMC. Uh, CMC was good for uh, 356.4 PPR points last year and Eckler was good for 372. Uh, you know, Eckler obviously number one, CMC number two. So we're, you know, we got the top two guys here. Um, Eckler's been put to rest a little bit getting two million in incentives which doesn't seem enough for him to, to come out and play this year but he seems happy enough with it now they are changing coordinators and we shall see with with a guy like Eckler um you know the Cowboys had always had been using Zeke and Pollard together so maybe somebody else enters a little firmer into the into the um, mix here with the Chargers but we know the passing game work uh, is going to be really good and Eckler was at a 19% target share and at a 28% targets per route run last year so you know elite numbers there um, so really I guess what I'm saying is is we could we could get off of CMC we could throttle down a tier or two still get that elite production and of course you know we could come out here and say we could have a list of just selling all the old running backs and I'm not he's, CMC's not on the, this list because we want to sell old running backs if you're not competitive it goes without saying that you're selling all the old running backs you don't want to pivot off of CMC and go to Eckler but we're talking about a competitive team here if you want to pivot off of CMC and get Eckler if, if what we're seeing is that there's a round round and a half difference between those guys in, in our FFD ADP um, you know why not try to to kind of 
pivot basically horizontal or maybe even up as far as PPR scoring goes and, and gain picks or another potential starter or, you know, a nice flex play or just be able to package that up. So I don't know how you guys feel about that, but that that's kind of my first pitch at a uh, at a pivot. at a pivot here. Uh, and kind of throttling down a little bit, which is going to be, like I said, my common theme here in kind of how we're talking about these guys. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a good point. I just don't know if I'd really want to. It really depends on the team what I'm trying to do there. Like right. if I could get, if it's a, if I'm a competitive team and I can get Eckler and a little piece extra, yeah. I mean, in the last in the last mock draft that we're in now. Um, Eckler went actually two rounds later than CMC did. So, and they are a year apart. Uh, yeah, Eckler Eckler's just turned twenty eight, and yeah. and McCaffrey still is twenty six. When you look at the just pull up the quick sleeper, but he does turn twenty seven June seventh. So it's okay. so they're, they're about a year. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't really know how many people are going to be wanting to buy CMC at this point, unless you're on a super competitive. I mean, I guess you, people who are on super competitive teams who think they're a running back away. I mean, if I could buy him, if I could buy like a, if you give me like a first and Najee, that's something I'm interested in. Right. CMC, something like that. So I have, or, I have the, my three other kind of pivots there would, 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 which would be lower stakes, younger guys, maybe for somebody who was a little bit more in a rebuild would be Jacobs, Stevenson and Najee. And I know, yeah. I know people will say, I don't want Najee. He stinks. But like, dude, he's fucking got a clear pat. He's one of the only yeah. bell cows left. The line yeah. got better. He was great at the end of the season, by the way, when he wasn't hurt. Kenny yep. was getting better. He he he's a good receiver, a really good receiver, and he's got 300 touches basically in his lap. So you yeah. can hate Najee all you want, but he's gonna be productive um, for sure. Yeah, so, he's gonna have volume nonetheless, right. volume regardless. But I feel and like I think he was more productive going down. But yeah. um, I don't hate the Eckler thing on a competitive team if I can pick up like a like you just mentioned a, a flex piece or a wide receiver three or something like that. Um, I definitely don't hate that. I just don't know. It seems like an interesting trade. Yeah, I don't know that you would necessarily... I was just ma- using that to yeah, kind no, of prove the saying. point a little bit and saying that you could go to there. And I think Jacob Stevenson Harris, at least you might see a bigger tier gap there where somebody might be a little yeah. more interested in that. Yeah, I yeah. think like if I'm in if, I, if I'm in the super, super competitive mode, right? I'm thinking I'm getting... I'm going all the way to the championship, then obviously I'm, it's going to be hard for me to, to pivot off CMC. But if I think I'm in that 9, 8, 7 range and I could pivot to like ETN or or somebody like that and get additional pieces and stay competitive um, while also doing a little bit of rebuild, I, I definitely see the tier the tier change there where I, I'm tiering down, quote unquote, but in PPR and, and that kind of thing, how far am I actually falling, especially right. if you factor in uh, CMC's like, I, I, I don't want to say health, but but like you you brought up a great point with um, Mitchell and just there's again I, I I say it a couple times right, but there's 18 games now like uh, or there's 17 but 18 total and 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 um, 49ers are looking at playoffs so they're going to be a little conservative I would say and just the the load that they're going to give CMC mm-hmm. um, and and then again that offense in general so yeah I, I definitely. Um, and, and right there with you is I, I have a competitive team with CMC currently. Um, it's a one quarterback, which is, uh, you know, not uh, when I play in very often, but um, I, I'm probably going to look to move him at some point during the season, just to, just to get that value. Like you said, to get, can I get a 2024 first and, and something else and still still stay competitive or maybe i had a couple too many injuries and then i'm gonna sell for something different right but right. but i i i'm i'm liking what you're saying how would you guys feel about a different strategy that i think that might actually be the play is what would it take for you as the cmc owner you feel comfortable giving up just to say fuck it and i'm just gonna go get Bijan. i'm gonna try to get basically mccaffrey five years younger I mean, if I can give up McCaffrey and maybe like a projected late first or like something like that kind of maybe not a late first, but maybe like a a McCaff basically you're doing the exact opposite thing going from you're basically giving up the same piece that you're giving up to go to fall back to get Eckler to go up to get Bijan. I mean, to me, that almost seems like the move. Yeah, I, I just think that that's double, triple cost. Because people are going to covet the age, so? the age, and he's already basically RB one right now. So like, I'm not even considering that unless you're throwing me 
unless that first offer comes through with, you know, maybe even two ones attached to it. Really? It's going to be that much? I think so. I mean, you know, it depends on the shape of that roster that Bijan is on. You're typically going to think that it's on a, on a worse roster. Yeah, so for sure. You're, you're trying it, to. I mean, you never know. You never know with the way picks get. Sure, traded, for so. sure. If it's a better roster, maybe you have a, a, a chance of somebody being, you know, it doesn't, we don't have to speak in first, but it could be another good player, a first. Yeah. And, and CMC to try to get Bijan from him. Right. So is that something that you would consider? I mean, obviously, the price is right. You consider anything, but like. Is that something you entertain as a CMC owner? I yeah, would for I, sure. I, I don't I, like. I'm kind of with Casey. I don't know if it will actually. Uh, yeah. If if the the owner would pull the trigger, but I definitely would send the offer. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I, it it's smart. I, I think you know if you have a if you have a very shiny piece, especially if it's a like an in season trade where somebody just went off and you're not confident in that person, uh, and you could throw that person in with CMC. I, I you know I definitely would also do that. I I think that there's two different strategies, right? Right now, I think it's really hard just because of rookie fever and yeah, you're getting like sure. two and a half of time yeah. value yeah, yeah. on Bijan. But I, I think as the season goes on, um, I, I, I think it'll, I think it'll simmer down, but who knows? I mean, the way they're going to use him, who, who, who knows what his, his value will yeah. look like in that first quarter of the season. So, yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's keep it moving. Who, who, who's the next sell high? We'll go Matt. What do you, uh, what are you thinking here? Who's your, uh, <laughs> Who's your pivot? This is someone I've just been down on. I just, I mean, I own him in a league, but I got him at 106 in a tight end premium league when he was drafted. And it's Kyle Pitts. Mm -hmm. It's, it, look, I, great. He's going to have a 20 to 25% market share, but when they're averaging 23 passes, but pass attempts per game, why do I care? Like, he's getting five passes, he's five to six pass attempts. He's going to have to be ultra efficient. They did bring in some help. We just mentioned Bijan. Obviously, Bijan is going to be a is a very good pass catcher. Um, so he's going to be playing in the slot as well too. They did bring in Mac Hollins and Scotty Miller. I know those aren't sexy names, but they're still names nonetheless. You still have Drake London there. It's a run first team, and this guy's still going at the beginning of the third round, if not the end of the second round. Whenever Jay Wayne decides he's going to overpay for him. Um, <laughs> and it's just I just don't get it again with the pivoting. If you go off of DLF ADP, I can get I can get I can get um, uh, Hawkinson three rounds later. And that 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 makes you you're excited about that. Yeah, he plays in a much better offense. Now they did just bring Addison, but he plays in a much better offense where they're going to throw the ball more. It's and and I'm going to get similar production. Yeah, everyone says, "Oh, Kyle Pitts is 22." I don't care. The average the average dynasty league lasts three to five years. That's what I'm looking at it from a three to five year perspective. And in the three to five year perspective, I don't see a difference in player, and I can move back off of Pitts and get Hawkinson. I'm in literally in the middle of a the league I own Pitts in. The problem is, is they're in the middle of a dispersal and the person who owns Pitt or a person who owns Hawkinson is in the dispersal. But when that dispersal ends, I'm setting a trade offer to get Hawkinson and another player so I can try to move off of Pitts because it's the value just is still very, it's not what quite, quite what it was last year. I think he's cooled off a little bit, but he's still getting drafted. He's getting drafted over Kelsey. He's getting drafted over Andrews. I'd still rather have Kelsey at 32 or 33 than than Pitts, and I'd rather have Andrews as well too. I I'm almost would rather. I mean, I don't know if I'd get Hawkinson straight up there, but I'm getting similar value there, and I'm getting it way. Ch I'm getting it several rounds cheaper. I'm gonna take that deal ten times out of ten. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not ready to move off of Pitts, but I understand the the pivot there. Um, I I like what what we have seen, and and as far as the the past game volume goes, I, I think that 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 can evolve over time as as creeping up from where where we were last year and evolution. I think that's just kind of what the team was, what they had, um, and kind of what they had to do, and where they were at with Mariota. I think they even increased a little bit just in the jump to Ritter. Yeah, I was um, looking at that a little bit here before we started. I was trying to figure that out, and I, I, I don't think it was much, but I, I if have it was, seen it was minuscule. I don't have them in front of me, but I have seen some splits of of some other times that Arthur Smith has been in charge and and being a little bit a little bit more pass heavy. I don't think it's ever going to be a crazy, you know, it's not going to be the Chiefs, uh, but yeah, uh, I, I think that could increase a little bit. Uh, but I, I I feel yeah, I, it's it's not the again, worst. again. I don't hate I don't hate Kyle right, Pitts. Right. I just think he's being 
overdrafted for the value that he's shown thus far. Yes, he set the rookie record for most receipt most receiving yards as a rookie. That's 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 great. Like great. But it, I don't know that he's done enough to be like, okay, how is he still being drafted as the tight end one in in in, in these in these dynasty leagues? So it's yeah, I, I think I think a pivot smart, um, especially if I'm com- competitive because I don't, I, I'm not out on Pitts, but I don't know about this coming year if he's going to be in the the Hawk or even Goddard um, level, right? As far as points on the board, like winning championship perspective, and I think because his value is still there, his floor is still, um, you know, floors and value is still pretty high. Like I think you can make that pivot, get an extra piece as well, and and feel pretty good about it. Um, especially if you're, if you're ship chasing, you know, like, um, that's typically how I play anyway. So, so I, I would have no problem with moving pits for, for somebody I feel like is going to score more points on a consistent basis, especially in a, in a tight end premium, um, you know, league. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's get to big D. Who's your first sell high here? Um, I'm wearing the hat or mostly for you, Casey, but it, so the Hawks, <laughs> DK, uh, Mr. DK Metcalf is kind of where I'm selling S- similar pivot standpoint, but just looking at that offense and how it's getting structured, you know, with um, JSN coming in Charbonnet in there as a pass catcher, um, the, the way that I feel like um, Pete Carroll and um, blanking on offensive coordinators name now, but the way that I feel like they're, they're structuring that offense, I, I just kind of feel like at DK's current value, I could probably pivot um, again off of him, get somebody with a little bit higher floor because that's part of my problem with him is I don't know if his floor is going to be there. I think he's going to be more of a Mike Williams boom bust when Mike Williams is on the field, but um, you know, more of a boom bust type of player. And, and I think with his value, if I could pivot off of say, you know, say DK and go even, even go age up, right. If I can go into cup or Adams and I'm looking to, to win this year, I, I feel like going to Cup or Adams from DK, you should be able to also add in um, something, something in your roster, whether that's picks or or um, or a player to pivot off of DK and and feel pretty good about that. Now, I I know that Lockett is aging out. You know, he's got his real estate license, so he's getting ready to sell some houses, <laughs> and and you know he'll probably be out of there next year. And you know, situations change. You know, is gonna. You know, he's in there for sure this year. Situations change. I, I get it. But for me, uh, looking to win championships, I'm looking to pivot off DK and get something in my in my lineup that I feel confident has more consistent value with just as much upside. Yeah, Shane Waldron is the uh, thank you is the yeah. OC. So are you are do you, what are your long term perspectives? I mean, DK could easily just be out of there as well too. He could be. Yeah, yeah. I it, and that's part of it too. Is is um is I, I don't know. I, I think he's extremely talented. He's he's um, also mentally, I think he's maturing a lot. I'm not a yeah. psychologist. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to say that, but you can just kind of tell that his temper has gotten, it's kind of simmered down on the sidelines. Like he's, yeah. he's definitely seems to be coming into his own. And so this could be a, a really stupid move on, on my part, but I think the odds are in my favor that he's going to be a great player, but I don't, know if he's going to be in the top echelon of great players and and right now eventually his value will probably even out you yeah know, he's still he's a, still holding on to a pretty highly regarded player sure. yeah so and i yeah. do like you know i don't i don't i think it's a pretty common theme here i don't think any of us hate any of these players right i mean oh. i don't i like dk i think I, when the wow shit from dk is crazy the wow shit from C, <laughs> right. cmc is still great i think Pitts is going to be good but yeah I, I feel you guys it's it's a strong uh <laughs> Yeah, don't hear what we're not saying. We're not saying trade these guys no matter what. We're saying yeah. trade, you know, you're trading up for value um, in, in future. Uh, and, and for me, it's not even future. With with these kind of cells, I'm looking for running for a championship. I'm not going to trade DK on a rebuilding team. I don't really see the point in it at this point. Yeah. Uh, maybe during the season I would, depending on how hot he is and what I could get from it. But, but he's young enough where he's going to be part of my thing. Uh, same thing with probably with Pitts. You know, um, as we talked about before, but um, yeah. So don't don't hear what we're not saying. We're yeah. not saying just trade these guys at all costs. <laughs> right. We're saying if you're looking to 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 win and and uh, and uh, cross that finish line, these guys may 
hold you back a little bit more than you think they will at this point in the season. Yeah, there's there's very few guys like we, we led this off with that we hate. If you right. have hate in your heart, let it out. You know, yeah, I, I think a great pivot for consistency purposes would be trading off of DK and going after like a Michael Pittman. Ooh, mm-hmm. I know that's your guy. So love me some Pittman. I like it. All right, let's uh, let's keep it moving here. Is it, anybody got anything else? I would I would also second uh, big deal with DK there. It's just he was someone I was putting on there for the same reason, just because it's always a run heavy team. They're bringing in JSN. I would I second the DK uh, the DK trading, but yeah. I could also you could also say the same thing about JSN as well too. I mean, especially on a competing team. I mean, what does that look like year one? Yeah, right. But again, he's a long term play there. I think there's very I think there's a there's a clear how dare you talk about a rookie like that right now. He's the he's the he's the where there's a clear path for him being the wide receiver one there next year. Yeah, as early as next year. And he's awesome. So, all right, uh, I'm I, I'm gonna go next here. I'm gonna pivot to some quarterbacks. We're talking super flex. Typically, when we're doing this, two, super flex tight end premium is usually what we're if we're placing values on things. That's what we're talking about. Um, I'm gonna throw Stroud and Young in this conversation here and you know again don't hate any of those guys and one of these guys could make me look pretty dumb right here it's it's likely not going to be both of them but one of them could there we go fresh pop nice loud one um you know if i had to bet it'd be i'd 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 bet on bryce young a little more than stroud for me personally um but could be completely wrong basically for me it's it's kind of what you said a little bit with dk metcalf um, you know, he's had a longer leash of staying up there and, and, and rightfully so from, from the attributes that he has. Uh, but Stroud and Young right now are like consistently super flex startup second round guys ish. Um, and do any of the do either one of those guys feel like they have the ceiling to be there even by next year necessarily or, or the year after? It seems like they're going to kind of float down into that. Daniel Jones, Kirk Cousins, uh, you know, kind of area there. Can he pick it and, and be floating around there? And now, again, one of those guys could come out and be awesome and be like, holy shit, this is amazing. But for me, that's kind of why I'm, you know, pivoting off of these guys a little bit and, and saying, you know, right now, I think at the rookie height, it seems like they're maybe at their premium. And I know that the quarterback position is, is hard to come by, you know, the more elite assets that everybody wants. Um, but I would probably use this time to kind of pivot, pivot down to a, a lesser quarterback like a Daniel Jones and get, you know, right now what we're doing, if you're taking Stroud or Young in the second round, Daniel Jones is going five or six round. We can go down multiple rounds. Daniel Jones was the QB eight last year, I believe QB nine. Uh, there's yeah. legs there, which I don't know that you have with any of either one of those guys. Maybe yeah, you could I, have it with Stroud. I think, that's the, I think that's the unknown variable there is the legs of right. those guys. And that's what you're looking for right now. That's what most of the guys in the top half of the first round have. They have the, they have the legs to add a little bit something extra on there, if not a ton extra on there. I think both of them will be good quarterbacks. I, you know, I don't hate either one, and maybe one will be awesome. But basically, I'm just saying that I think right now we're we're kind of peaked out at value. And I'm not one of those guys who comes on and says, I'm not drafting a guy at the peak of their value, but with the quarterback like this, like I'm fine with drafting guys who are at the peak of their value, scoring a ton of points um, and are going to stay up there and have no room for movement or whatever. I'm saying that these guys are maybe at the peak and going to drop down. And yeah, so once I start seeing that, I, you know, I wouldn't mind grabbing, you know, saying Daniel Jones with some legs and saying, hey, what else can I get? Maybe I can get a couple of picks, a, a, another really good starter from trading off of the one three in the startup or the one three in the rookie draft this year to down to, I'm going to keep, keep referencing Daniel Jones, but really I'd be fine with a Geno or a Mac Jones as well. Like I think those guys could, could basically be the, where they level out to be that kind of player and shit. I mean, we, you were just talking about Geno Smith a little bit uh, and the Seahawks offense. And I mean, right now, What's surrounding Gino is really pretty awesome. And last year, you know, I was, I was, he was QB five overall, according to fantasy pros, uh, and overall total points, I don't points per game. He wasn't, he was 18.5. Uh, but you know, I think Mac Jones is going to take a step forward. I, I think, I think Stroud and young are probably about a Mac Jones, Gino Smith, Jared Goff like Kirk cousins, like quarterbacks in the league which is is no all those guys are great qb twos i'm just saying right now that i think there's a little meat on that bone that you could suck off yeah gain a uh and 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 you know get a little something extra in there and then you know additionally like you were talking with cmc to move up the target for me would be a guy like kyler murray 
Can I? Can yeah. How much does it? Yeah, cost? but Murray's going behind. Murray's going behind some of these guys. And so, sometimes behind Young in this in this most recent startup we're doing. Not like, not normally, but yes, yes. But I, that's what I'm saying. Like I would, tr- I could also pivot up and try to get into Kyler Murray or maybe even a, you know maybe Dak. But he doesn't do as much for me because the legs aren't as used anymore. Kyler legs, you know, Kyler has been, uh, you know, QB eight, QB four, QB four on a points per game. Uh, Kyler scares me with the new regime. That's what scares me sh- with Kyler. Sure, but he's still got, he's still got the legs. He's still got the legs. Right. No, I, I think, agree with that. I agree yeah. with that. Fantasy, just, I don't like Kyler all that much, but fantasy wise, man, he's, he just, he's a, he's a pretty good fantasy quarterback. He was QB yeah. two overall in 2020. Uh, and then he was QB eight overall in the games that he played, uh, I believe through week 12 last year, QB eight. And it was a dumpster fire over there last year too. And and yeah, we don't have the same high flying offense. We're, you know, but uh, th- and there's certainly a change coming and shit. Kyler may not even be a Cardinal in a year. You never know. It's, it's just a yeah. weird undertone going on there, but I've just given you an example of an up and a down for me. It would be kind of like a Kyler Murray range, maybe add a little something, to Stroud and Young, or go down to those other quarterbacks. Um, yeah, I think I think I wouldn't mind even a, a Dak. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, Dak's not sexy, but I mean, he's got an extra. He's got another weapon there this year. Maybe Dak has some expanded running game work with them not bringing in another running back. I mean, I don't know. So, I think this could be a good buy time for Dak as well, too. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think with the young Stroud, you know, you talked about um, Kyler, and I think his value, because it's in the tank right now, you might, you might even be able to do it straight up come season time and yeah. you're not playing, yeah. you know what I mean? And and that, to me, even on a rebuild, you know, we, we were talking about being competitive, but if I have a, if I earned those uh, top top of the Superflex um, draft pick, if I earned to pick that guy, like, I might pick up Kyler, trade off young or Stroud, whoever I have, if I can, and then watch midseason and try to flip flip Kyler to a competitor at the end of it. Right. Yeah. You know, like, like a, there's a lot of options there. Um, especially from a rebuild, um, not, not, not looking to compete in 2023 roster yeah. that you can do with those picks. Get, get yourself a better shot at Caleb Williams for next year. Mm. Exactly. Now yeah. we're talking. All right. Uh, let's keep it moving here. Um, Matt, who you got? Trey Lance. All right. Um, looks like it's full steam ahead here for Purdy. Seems like he's going to be, um, uh, ready for training camp. And in the latest mock draft we did, Trey Lance went four rounds ahead of Brock Purdy. So I don't get that one at all. Um, it seems like San Francisco, based on the things they're saying is they've seen it with Purdy. They haven't seen it with Lance. So, they're going to go with bird in hand versus two in the bush. So I can't really say a blame in there. I mean, I don't know. If, I mean, I guess Lance could get traded, but it seems like that ship has almost sailed for this year unless an injury happens. Now, if an injury happens, I don't know. If something happens. If we get a Mike, if we get a, um, uh, if we get a Mike Vick injury, like he had, like happened to him in preseason mm-hmm. all those years ago, something crazy like that happens. Then I don't know, but, um, it just seems like that's a that that's a he went in the fifth round of a startup, and we're talking about a guy who's most likely going to be a backup quarterback this year. Not really understanding that one. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. They they do keep kind of selling a little bit of Purdy of saying like, hey, he earned it, which I agree. I mean, if he's healthy and ready to go, I think I think Purdy deserves the chance to start. It's it's, it's no slight on Lance he just really hasn't gotten you know the opportunity and the fair shake they you yeah, know a lot of sure no I agree with that a lot of videos right now on, on Lance's mechanics and how how his mechanics look better and how that finger was was kind of fucking up some of the things that he was trying to unlearn and relearn uh, but what you're saying it, it, you know I'm I'm never really looking at Lance in that area where he's usually yeah, being drafted I mean, so I, I feel you with that it hurts me I'm like damn why are you personally attacking me but you I know mean, he went a, he went a pick ahead of he went a pick ahead of Russell Wilson he went half round ahead of Jared Goff I mean he's going ahead he went two rounds ahead of Geno and Kenny Pickett right like it's it's I, yeah go ahead big D I, I think this one is 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 uh is interesting because I think it's also league dependent right because yeah, I think for you, sure I think you're gonna have some people who are are just solid on Lance and you know I, like you were referencing some of these some of these recent drafts we had and obviously they're out there they're they're definitely out there and and I think you can 
you could definitely gain value. Um, I, and again, I, I wouldn't sell to sell because there's opportunity, as you were alluding to, that he could have um, a bounce in value too, right? Like in the beginning of the season, if he's starting for whatever reason or or an injury happens, you he could skyrocket in value from what you would get for him right now from even even a Lance Truther. Um, but but I wouldn't be afraid to move him off my team is, is I think uh, how I look at it. Yeah, and this seems... I mean, right after the right after the draft, he went four nine in a startup. Mm-hmm. There's still like, there's still the hope and a lot of lot of capital invested in him that'll get traded, and then then there's the le- again the legs that are intriguing and and you know it's it's a weird one, man. It's a, it's like I I hope that obviously I would love it for Lance to play because I want to see the fourth dimension, the fourth wall be broke down on the Niners of a mobile quarterback. I think that's what they really wanted. They wanted that fucking that next level thing. So it's like, Hey, we're so multiple. It doesn't even, what are you going to do? Um, but you got, you, you found somebody that can operate the offense efficiently. You found your Kirk cousins, your, your Matt Ryan potentially with, with Purdy here. And I think they want to, see if they can make that work. Um, so I, I've always hoped that Lance gets just, it's a tough situation for Lance to be in. Like you yeah. have all this capital. You feel like you're always looking over your shoulder. You almost need a fresh start where somebody goes, Hey, we're going to guarantee you two years to be, to, to, to get this together and be the guy. Cause it's like, that's what you would normally be allotted. It just, you know, it was just a weird funky situation on a, on a almost fantasy wise win now team where they were like, ah, fuck it. We got to make this work. We're, we're bringing Jimmy back. Right. Party's coming in while well, party can operate. We're we're going to fuck with that. We're not going to miss this window, you know, so it's a it's a weird thing. But I feel you. There still is some value with Lance. And, and I, you know, at this point, it's OK to capitalize on it. And and if it doesn't work out, if Lance starts crushing, I'll figure out how to buy back in. But until then, I'm, I, I think I'm fine with with cashing out like you're kind of saying here. I, it just seems like if he was if, if he was going to be moved, he would have been moved already. Now, we haven't seen a mid-year quarterback trade. I think that would be. I think that would be wild. I mean, maybe if Washington is like if they're playing well and Hal's struggling a lot, or if Atlanta's is 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 playing well but Ritter's struggling a lot, maybe we see something there. But I just don't see a lot of places where he makes sense. Same thing with Tampa as well, too. Um, yeah, I, I, I think Baker's coming in there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But it seems like almost like he would be. He, it almost seems like the Niners would want to move him into the AFC. So don't have to worry about playing him yeah, more often than not. So I think the Niners um, are still a little. We don't know what's going to happen with Purdy. We hope Sam Darnold, but shit, maybe we might have to play Lance here, and we invested a lot in him. So maybe they're they still sure did. holding they sure it did. to the vest. But uh, yeah, any other Lance thoughts before we move on? At, at what point are you guys would be buying Lance? Like fourth or fifth round just seems a way yeah, too early for I'm, me. But. I'm, another two rounds, I might start looking, but I know that's probably not going to happen. So yeah. Uh, but no, I, I I'd probably buy him. Like if, could I, could I move somebody that I don't have faith in like Ritter or love or somebody yeah. like that down where I think his value is anyways. Right. But during, during season with, if one of those guys spike a little bit and um, I, I might move off of them into the, into Lance or, yeah. you know, if somebody's just trying to get rid of them. Um, yeah. I think, <laughs> you know, a, I, I think a play I might, I think, I think a play I, I'm interested in trying in, is seeing how far I, I'm hoping the Purdy news can keep coming and coming and coming. Is I have a team where I happen to luck into drafting uh, Herbert and Burrow in the same draft year, and I also have Matt Stafford. Um, is hoping I can, hoping that I can move a small, I can move a piece plus Stafford to get Lance and have Lance as my QB three. I think Lance is, would be the absolute perfect QB three um, in a super flex league. But I don't know how many teams would be fortunate enough to be able to have three quarterbacks. Yeah. I and mean, I've seen them before. I've seen them before. The teams, yeah. they're super flex teams that draft really well and have two, three, four top 18 quarterbacks. And you can you can be a little bit more aggressive there at quarterback. So yeah. um, I think that's the play is if you can get Lance as your QB three rather than your QB two, you're definitely sitting in the catbird seat there. Yeah, or even a, a alternate position. Like, can I trade Mixon in something to get Lance? Right. Like, I don't know where Mixon's value is right now. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about. It's him certainly better than it was two months ago. Yeah, it's it's certainly better, and it's trending up. But again, yeah, and some of the like, big dogs right now are giving some Mixon love out there. So I think you're going to see um, a little couple round spike there. Right. Exactly. And so 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 something like that. Can I can I move a different yeah. position for Lance? Because anytime that you can 
can move one of those skill positions for a quarterback with with potential and pop, especially if it's a skill position player that you're not confident in. I mean, to me, that's a win because the the risk side of uh, the risk reward factor is there. So yeah, I, I like all those. I like all those thoughts. Mixon went here. Um, uh, Mixon went eighth round in this most recent startup. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that could be in the ballpark. But I, I like I like the ideas of kind of what your guys are saying to buy back in, and we we're, we're in a sell show, but we're you know buy back in at the, at, with with lower stuff. He does have two things going for him: is that you know the the, the again his value is being retained means the public has liked him and and has continued to like him and help him stay up there. That's huge. So if, like you said, you get a pop. The Lance right. pop's going to be great. And then as soon as he gets a trade, he's getting a pop regardless if he goes somewhere else. And I feel like he is like there's just he's going to get an opportunity somewhere, whether it's this year, next year, whatever. I feel like there's going to be yeah. there's going to be a year for Trey Lance to get his shot somewhere. So I think all those things trend positively for Lance. But I, I understand moving off and then trying to or come back in with with something cheaper uh like you guys have been saying. So I, I like that. Let's keep it moving here. Uh, Big D, who you got? Yeah, Mr. Uh, fr- the Frank Gore of running backs. That would be Kirk Cousins, you know, quarterback <laughs> 12. Uh, you know, Kirk Cousins is great. Don't uh, Again, he's on a competitor team. He's probably staying on my team. Um, on a semi-competitive to definitely on a rebuild, obviously I'm moving him, right? I, I hit his value right now. I feel like it's higher than than 12 i probably should have did the actual research on that but especially maybe not right now or not not during rookie season not during the off season but once the football is uh is is getting thrown around the field a little bit once uh jj starts doing some amazing catches that you see addison out there doing his uh vanilla stuff uh sorry i have to i have to put my vanilla addison out there again but um (laughs) once once he's uh you know once he's on the field and and proven it i think his value is going to spike to more of the redraft um kind of value and that's probably where i'm looking to move off cousins if i'm not again if i'm not competitive or even if i'm semi-competitive and 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 then i'm gonna probably pivot if if he is my quarterback three on a on a super flex that i might even pivot out of quarterback completely i know that's uh scary for a lot of people i've i do that um personally i'll 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 go with another uh you know another player that i that i might need or i might want you know um maybe i go to cmc right can i can i split cousins for cmc maybe cousins plus a little bit for cmc on a competitive team you know um to put him into my lineup especially again if i have two quality quarterbacks uh on, on my roster where Kirk Cousins is a luxury, um, and if he's not a luxury, then I'm, I'm, I'm I, his again. His value is going to continue to climb um, into the season, and and at that point, there's going to come a point where I'm going to be like, okay, I, I I'm going to pivot off him because it just makes too much sense for me to to. Uh, uh, I, I don't know what his contract status is. I, I was going to look that up before. Um, I think it's only maybe like one more year with because yeah, he's got I think those. he's got one more year. He was trying to get an extension, and the Vikings just said mm, no thanks. Yeah, they've been yeah. kind of okay. shopping, and he also, you know, I like Cousins. I love Cousins as my QB two um, sure, yeah. on a competitive team, but you know, right. that's not really what you're talking about. He's also 35, 36. Doesn't seem like he's going to be one of those guys who is necessarily going to be playing well into his 40s and and you know that that kind of that kind of deal. It feels like when the cliff comes for cousins people already hate him all he does is produce and people already still hate him i feel like as soon as there's any dip like you know dip in that production i feel like he's gonna really fall off a cliff fast uh but Mm -hmm. you know maybe it's just the dad the dad uh wear that that he puts out there maybe he's maybe he's ripped i don't know cousins went as in case you were curious cousins is going off the board as qb 17 qb 17 yeah in the most recent mock draft, he went in between Daniel Jones and Trey Lance. Yeah, you got to find the right partner to sell to, like somebody like me. But I mean, that's QB seven last year, so yeah, Cousins, Cousins never gets no damn respect. Uh, yeah. But but I feel you. I feel what you're saying there. Um, anybody think got anything else? Cousins going once. I uh, mean, the guy makes his stake in on tinfoil, so <laughs> that should be enough right there. Yeah, I've never heard of this. Yeah, he like puts it in like a tin foil, like a like he doesn't like put it directly on the grill grates. You got to get the good grill marks. Well, then like, when he serves it, isn't he like you like that? 
You like yeah. that? You know, yeah. like it's kind of like, wait a minute, man. Come yeah. on. In his Come 97 on. Down, cr- in his 97 I mean, I, I have I have made a I have made a, a foil tray for like the asparagus on the grill. Sure, 100%. Sure. I'm totally on that one. Doesn't roll around and shit as it falls <laughs> yeah. to the grates. That's fine. Don't cook your goddamn steak yeah. on there. Like you you're getting 90 million. You just got a, you got a contract 90 million guaranteed. I I mm. think you can let your let your A5 wag you go right on the grill there. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I think I'm 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 cast iron skillet in my steak. I mean, yeah, it's over handling. Not even going in the grill. Drier than a fart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ho- ho- hopefully, we got some letter candy fans out there. <laughs> All right. Uh, last one here, Matt. You're up, man. I know this is going to break your heart. I really do. Mm. I feel like I all, really most do. of your things have been personal attacks on me. They they have been, and, and that's really the, that's really that's really the ultimate goal. Is <laughs> all of my players that I want to sell have been yeah. personal attacks against you and Jay Wayne. That's just what I've been going through. Um, but it's Kenneth Walker the third. Kenny three sticks. Um, mm. You say his name properly. It's Kenny three sticks around here, pal. Uh, Ken, yeah. Ken Ken or as or as uh, Egg Sluber had him last year as Ken Walker. <laughs> yeah. So it's just it's the same thing it's the same thing with with Lance. I mean, he got drafted 3-9. Yeah, that was a little heavy. Uh, that that's I like mean, he got drafted over ADP. Saquon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was a bad that was a bad pick on that last whoever drafted him there. I think he then the one previous to that I think he might have went a little earlier, but continue. Four seven. He went yeah. four seven. Four seven. I think but four still, seven. I, I mean, think I think fifth round was where I thought he would a uh, round start falling to. Uh, because I do, you know, the, go ahead. But I mean, we're talking about a guy here. Here's a guy to a was, man. They brought in, obviously they brought in a Zachary Chabonet and, uh, Kenny McIntosh who I don't like him, but those guys catch passes. So I know you go, well, Walker caught pass. Guess what? They've got, they brought guys in who actually have caught passes before. So I would imagine that those are the guys who can be playing on third down. Also, we're getting into the metrics game Let's here. Let's settle down with fucking Kenny McIntosh. Metrics. Oh. Mm. Kenny 3-6 was stuffed on 26% of his carries last year, second worst in the league, and had a league worst 33% success rate. So we're talking about a, a boom or bust running back here. And if things are uh, booming, they're busting. So... We're talking. We, they brought in a guy. Another. They brought another second round pick. Someone who can who has shown to be able to be more than a boomer bust guy. So third round. I think fourth round is too early for me too. I'm looking yeah, probably more agreed. in the in the at the sixth round at, at this point. I'm taking Najee. I'm taking sure. um, Stevenson. I'm sure. taking. Mm. Um, Jacobs, Et Jacobs, I mean, yeah, I'm fine yeah, with those just, guys. I might even be getting into the Chubb range. Mm-mm. I mean, with the positive news here, I mean, you might be able to sell me on Swift or Javante Williams at this point. No way, over Jose. Kenny Walker. No way, Jose. Um, no, I mean, it, it's it's <clears throat> it's interesting. Uh, I, it's definitely too high on that last mock, um, but I think fifth six is is acceptable, and I think I think Kenny's. Still a really good player. He was a rookie. I mean, I know we can get caught up in the efficiencies, and next year he could be super efficient with. Uh, I with, mean, I will. So one thing I doing. will say, I looked up the efficiency thing. It was it was weird because like this, there was some we, there was some interesting names on this efficiency list, like Nick Chubb, Saquon Barkley. The only name on the list prior, the only name that showed up on the list twice. Um, from 1987 to 2022 was Barry Sanders. Yeah. So. Um, I think it can come with the territory on playing on a I don't think the line was the best. And, and I think sometimes they were it was pretty clear what the Seahawks motives were doing, that they were going to run the ball. And that, they, you know, it was like, fuck, Kenny had nowhere to go. Yeah, but yeah, I know, but I know the, they're weighing, uh, you know, yards expected, all that bullshit in there. Yeah. But but here's the thing. At the, some point, if if Kenny's just barreling into the line five times in a row, what what's stopping them from just putting in Charbonnet? And letting him kind of carry the hot hand there. Yeah, no, I, I that's think, my concern. I so, think you're certainly going to get, uh, you know, a, a nice 60-40 mix with Charbonnet handling, you know, more more like 60-40 of the pass work uh, in his favor. Um, yeah, but how much? But that's the whole thing, though. How much pass work is Walker really going to get? Yeah, I mean, you're 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 hoping for 
you know, two, um, two or three, two or three, two or three catches. targets a game would be would be would be the ceiling, I would imagine at this point. Well, I think what you're saying, or at least what I'm hearing, is Kenny. Kenny's a great RB two. He's not an RB one. Yes, right? for like, sure, for sure. And so, if Kenny's I can get him drafted as an RB one, right? Exactly, and that's the problem. If I, if I can get him in the sixth, sixth round, fifth round, you know, and he's my RB two, I'm I'm thrilled. That's you know all day Kenny three sticks. And my, I, I'd have to change a team name because of that. But but if he's my sole uh, RB one spot, and I've got a bunch of like what yeah. ifs and on the, on the can't RB have that and three spot, then yeah yeah I'm super nervous and and I'm right there with you. So I I, I completely get what you're saying. I I think his value um, could get to a point where I'm going to be buying a lot. To be completely honest with you, because I I don't think he's uh, RB three territory. I do yeah, think he's RB two. I'm um, with you there. Mm-hmm. And so if, if, if he, if he drops down into that late RB two, two stage, I'll be, you know, we could flip this dock and I'd start buying him. But, but right now where he's at, especially with the last mock, but, but even some of the other pieces I've seen, yeah, I, I think a pivot off of him, if people are holding his value that high, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It, do, it yeah, does. I mean, even, I mean, even other places have him as R like their ADP has him as RB eight. Like, yeah. Like, it seems just, it seems like there's enough of a split and a contingency to be propping up the value a little more than any of us want to pay for it right now. Um, and mm-hmm. I'll just I'm fine with taking Charbonnet a few rounds later. Um, at this point, I and again I'm a huge Kenny Walker guy, but I was a huge Charbonnet guy. I really like both of them. I think I think the, again talking, but going back to the the Geno Smith pivots, uh, you know, quarterback wise, not he's maybe not getting enough love for how much fun that offense could be this year. Yeah. Uh, just kind of weapons everywhere, and he was still good last year. But you know, I, I do think there's enough. There's enough. There's at least thirty percent of of a league I think that still is excited about Kenny Walker being like, ah, fuck it. He's going to be the main guy and Charbonnet is just going to come in and kind of play to him. So I think the value is, is probably still a little overinflated. And if you could find the right guy, I think, I think it is a, a pretty good sell. Walker seems like that kind of guy where you sent out a league wide trade to, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. there's going to be one guy in your league who loves Kenny Walker. Yeah, for sure. Um, anybody got anything else before we wrap this thing up? All righty then. Um, we could throw Jay Wayne's in there real quick. Um, not no, on, can't. not on the show tonight, but uh, he's going Christian Watson sell. He's going uh, Rashad White sell, which I agree. I know that Matt does well, not. How are you showing? How uh, all right, all Sean right. Wayne? We'll we'll, we'll pick it up. Ninth round. Get Next time we Jesus. see you, we'll pick it up, and you can get excited about it. Holy and then shit! He's got Amon Ross St. Brown in there, which I'm I'm kind of. 50 50 on i like i'm driving over there and punching jason in the face nobody likes jason sells all right except for rashad white um but uh interesting interesting list there and i I, you know i could understand most of them uh but anyway uh we appreciate you guys be sure to like subscribe comment below the discord's popping with the five dollar holler uh we got big d and matt over there in there so uh we're, we're pumping out three extra patreon shows uh a month here in addition to what we're doing over here for you guys um so been a good time and, and if you're not gonna five dollar holler let me get a five star review from you uh, or at least a subscribe button on youtube because uh, or go ahead revelry bruco revelry bruco.com good good chef t-shirt that's another way to support the team uh anything but but a seahawks uh jersey uh you know or hat uh would be fine uh but we, we do Second really appreciate you guys, uh, and we'll, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.